Hello there, I'm Tim, my companions are Daisy and Ruby, and together we are the Owl. Welcome back to part four. So, this is the bit we're doing today. If I recall correctly, when I left you at the end of part 3, gagging for more, I had mentioned that Butterley Reservoir was special. How special and why was my promise to you at that time? And so... Butterley was, at about 50 acres, the largest of the three reservoirs built in 1794 to supply the water to the Cromford Canal along with the now filled in Butterley Park and the extant Cromford Park Reservoirs, overseen by the ever-present William Jessop. When the canal was working, the businesses below the reservoir didn't want the flow of the River Derwent, upon which they relied very heavily, to be interrupted. So, to pacify these people, an agreement was reached whereby the reservoir was filled during the weekend and drained during the week. The water was provided to the canal by the use of an adit, which drained into the canal inside the Butterley Tunnel. About 900 yards from the western end was a wharf beneath the Butterley Works, at a location known as the Wide Point. At this wharf, raw materials and produce could be transferred as required. All this came crashing down, quite literally, in 1889 when the tunnel was closed for four years because of a collapse. Seven years after reopening, another collapse had the tunnel closed again. This time, it was to prove permanent. Finally pronounced beyond economical repair in 1909, all commercial traffic on the Cromford Canal ceased in 1944. Oh, the The canal itself runs, more or less, underneath Coach Road. There isn't much to see here and the tunnel is not accessible, so we had to walk a footpath to the north of the tunnel. Having found the end of the footpath, we now descend past the Newland Station. This small length of 24-inch gauge industrial railway is what remains of a network which once covered the huge expanse of the Butterley Works, its outstations and the supplying mines and quarries. Now it provides rides for tourists at weekends and holidays during the summer months. In between the earth and sky Still to drift on a summer breeze Was to taste paradise But that summer and yes, here it is, the eastern portal of the tunnel, about 3,000 yards from the western end. Now that is a tunnel. So, the girls and I, together with all the kit, cross the main road and head on towards the Codner Park Reservoir. The scenery once again starts to get interesting. Not least, this pedestrian bridge, which was constructed to allow the residents of the nearby cottages on the left to get to their allotments on our right. Although now defunct, it's an interesting and strangely mesmerising piece of Victorian architecture. Oh, 
Codner Park Reservoir was the last of the three main reservoirs, built to supply the vast amount of water required by the lock systems on the Cromford Canal. It's now a wildlife haven and a beauty spot enjoyed by many and worked on by a dedicated team of volunteers who work very hard to repair and to produce these excellent facilities for both the people and the wildlife. When the flood defences had been completed, the lake had had its depth reduced and the Pinkston arm of the canal had been left high and dry. Under this bridge ran the Pinkston arm of the canal, a three mile spur which will probably have its own short video at some time. Let me know in the YouTube comments if you would be interested in this. And so, the Pooches and I head towards Boat Lane, past the flight of seven disused locks that used to be fed by the three reservoirs. Chocolate box scenery, isn't it? Known locally as the Humpy Bridge, this recently restored crossing, although it looks rural now, was once in the heart of the foundry system which was this area. The bridge allowed boats access to the Portland Wharf, where coal from the Portland collieries came down the rails, whose course can still be seen at the bridge's 10 o'clock position. This coal was loaded onto the waiting narrowboats. Directly opposite was the Codner Park Works, another satellite of the Butterley Company, and all of which is now long gone. Onward and southeastward, ever onward. To the left, water. To the right, filled in fields. Sad, but more useful I suppose. This heralds the next leg. This time across agricultural land. A lovely walk nonetheless, although you need to like beast. Uh, that's cattle to the it? We've come up from there, and are about to begin the last leg from here, Boat Lane, to Langley Mill Wharf. And the connections to the rest of the country and ultimately the whole empire as was.
Okay, so now we have to leave you behind once more while we head on to the end at Langley Mill. It only remains to thank you for following us so far. Ask that you go on to the YouTube channel and leave the customary like, comment and subscription to enable you to keep up with the new posts, help out the channel and get notifications when the next part is posted. So, till next time, have fun, take care. See you later.